As I noted at the beginning of the ceremony, alumni are crucial to the success of any college, and we are fortunate in having dedicated alumni who generously give the college their time, experience, and support. And we come to a special moment of our ceremony, uh, which is the final salute to the graduating class as they are about to become themselves alumni. There's no more fitting way to mark this moment than by turning to someone who is himself a distinguished alumnus of the college. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Ariel Ostad. Uh, he's a board certified dermatologist and dermatologic surgeon, a fellow of the American Academy of Dermatology. He graduated magna, magna cum laude from Washington Square and University College with a BA in 1987, and he was elected to Phi Beta Kappa. In 1991, he received his MD from the NYU School of Medicine. He went on to do an internship at Harvard Medical School and completed his residency in dermatology at NYU Medical Center in 1995. He completed a fellowship in Mohs Micrographic Surgery, Laser, and Dermatologic Surgery at UCLA. And Ariel is also a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Dermatology at NYU Medical Center, where he's been honored several times for his mentorship and teaching of students. He's a former contributing editor to the Journal of Dermatologic Surgery and a course instructor for the American Academy of Dermatology. He's authored numerous articles, has written textbook chapters, co-authored a textbook, and serves as a popular resource with the media. He's a supporter of the Dean's Undergraduate Research Fund and has established a scholarship at the School of Medicine and also here at NYU. It is really a deep pleasure to be able to welcome Ariel Ostad. Thank you. Thank you for that kind introduction. Uh, let me begin by congratulating the graduates on their achievement as well as their families and friends, faculty and administration for making this journey possible. I'm honored and grateful to be here today in your very happy celebration, graduating from one of the finest universities in the country. I remember being in your shoes graduating 24 years ago from NYU and how extremely excited I was for my accomplishment. I personally don't remember much from the commencement speech I heard at my graduation, but I promise to be brief, yet relevant, and hope to make a difference. It seems only appropriate to tell you today that the future is yours for the taking. It's an exciting time for you. I think it is the most interesting time in our history, yet it's important to not allow the uncertainty of the global economy and high unemployment to drown out your excitement and what you have accomplished. You must not allow fear and anxiety, which is always around us, to take over. You have the power to overcome all that negativity through simply having a vision and working hard and being determined to achieve your goals. In light of all uncertainty, I'm here to tell you that all of you have the potential to become immensely successful in these most trying times. Yet your success in life requires more than receiving an outstanding education that you have received. I would like to share with you today some key attributes that have guided me to become who I am, not only as a physician, but as a member of our community. First and foremost, do what you love. Pursue your dream. Find what you're passionate about. It's in that pursuit that one can truly be happy and successful. Doing what you love often comes easy to you. What truly gives you joy and takes you to the zone where work becomes play and your focus and passion bring you to a state of fulfillment. Find that passion. Listen to the little voice inside to guide you. In the process, trust your instincts and intuition. When you pursue your passion, no matter what it is, it not only brings you joy and happiness, but certainly will bring you success. In the face of adversity, it is far much easier to rise to the challenge and stay committed and focused when you truly love what you do. The great philosopher Khalil Gibran said beautifully that work is love made visible. And if you cannot work with love, but only with distaste, you should leave your work and sit at the gate of the temple and take alm of those who work with joy. In my case, my love and passion has been to combine my interest in medicine and healing disease with the arts, which has led me to be a dermatologic surgeon. I drive my satisfaction by meticulously reconstructing a patient's face 
unfortunately after having to have a skin cancer removed, and yet provide the necessary empathy to, the, to a patient through that difficult process. I was also passionate about being a teacher starting at a young age, and now I teach my knowledge to medical students and residents who are training for skin surgery at NYU School of Medicine. So do what you love. Climbing the wrong ladder in life when one is in their 60s wishing what only could have been or should have been if only they had followed their true passion. You must also have a vision of your goals and then envision your success. You must learn to produce an image of victory that you will continually see in your mind. This constant imagery of yourself, the envisioning of your truly successful self will push you through all the difficulties in your path. The process of success is arduous and can be very challenging, so don't give up. Expect more from yourself than anyone else does. It's your passion, your dream. Pursue excellence in everything you do. There are no shortcuts, just working hard consistently. You must learn to become your own cheerleader. As the great philosopher Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is therefore not an act, but a habit. You must also not be afraid of failing. It is through failure that one matures and gains experience and becomes stronger and a more well-rounded individual. Sometimes the closest people around you will tell you your dreams are too big. Even President Obama was told his dreams were too big. Indeed. As Einstein said, great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. I myself encountered those feelings of fear and failure upon graduating from my residency training. Despite my excellent training, I was afraid of starting my medical practice thinking how can I succeed and compete with all those great doctors in a place like New York City. As difficult as those early years were for me in establishing my practice, I forged ahead. I did not look back. I listened to my inner voice, worked hard, and despite multiple challenges, pursued my dream of becoming one of the best doctors in my field in this country. I'd like to shift gears and talk to you and highlight the importance of life experiences in helping to become emotionally intelligent and well-rounded. I was 12 years old when my parents sent me to this country alone with my sister from Iran after a revolution. My sister, who was 16 at the time, and I were forced to grow up fast. We were faced with so much uncertainty in our life at an age when we needed our parents the most. We learned to be strong and to turn our fears into faith. We trusted that we'll be reunited with our parents, and after four long years, we finally did. But for those four years, what got me through was the love from my sister and my family back in Iran and my faith in God. In retrospect, those difficult years formed my character and taught me to appreciate life and freedom and to not take for granted what I have, to appreciate life for its simple pleasures. The pursuit of happiness and freedom, those life experiences gained during those lonely times helped shape me to become an empathic, emotionally sensitive individual with a strong work ethic, which to this day helps me in taking care of my patients and also in my relationships. I'm here to tell you that you need those life experiences beyond a formal education to become emotionally intelligent. Furthermore, as an immigrant, I also wanted to be equal to everyone else, so I developed an incredible work ethic and understood very well how to delay gratification, or at least I tried. I worked nonstop and tried not to give in to distractions. It was ultimately what I expected of myself to become a great physician. Those life experiences were priceless in helping develop my character and in truly the, it's the asset that I earn and now use every day. I'm also most grateful for the opportunity given to me here at New York University to pursue a first-rate education and to combine this training with my life experiences to become an asset to society. So do what you love, work hard, and don't ever give up. Envision your successful self and pursue your dream. Find your role model, but also use your own creativity. 
And when you're climbing this ladder of success, as hard as it may be, pause for a small moment and be truly grateful for all that has allowed you to become successful. Being in this country with systems in place that allows you to pursue your dreams and not being stuck in a country that in light of one's intelligence, talents, and abilities, there's nowhere to go, no systems in place. Or the systems may be in place but only offered to certain socioeconomic groups or a religious or political sect. And the impossible tasks and difficult situations and people in your path that constantly challenge you they are there to truly reshape you to become an even better version of the successful ideal that you envision. Friends, when we live gratefully, it is in those moments of true gratitude that we, that we all finally look back and see the world with a certain compassion and appreciation that's beyond any division or boundaries. It's when we realize that our own struggles to achieve our goals are important yet minuscule compared to the enormity of our commitment to our community and shared responsibilities. It's when we finally can let go of our small differences and truly empathize with those who don't have what's necessary to realize their dreams. It's when we realize that in order to preserve this planet that we are so grateful for and want to maintain for our grandchildren that we are truly an interdependent world, relying on everyone to share this responsibility. So friends, work hard, realize your dreams, give a hand to those who need our help so that one day, they too can share their dream. And always remember your profound obligation to the future. I leave you with a final quote from Einstein. Try not to become a man of success, but a man of value. God bless all.